Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about the brand new QNAP ZFS NAS. I want to talk about the TSH886. This is their brand new three tier storage solution. Now, first and foremost, let's discuss the elephant in the room, this microphone. I'm not actually recording in my usual location today. I've got managed to get my hands on one of these units quite early doors, but unfortunately it means I'm not in my usual area and I'm recording in this giant space white void wherever I am right now. So consequently, it's very hard to control the audio and I've just had to bite the bullet and have the mic nice and close. So I apologize for this mic being here. And also when I start playing with a chassis like this, if you start hearing that on the mic, so I apologize in advance. But this is the new 8-bay NAS. Now I say 8-bay, anyone with half an eye will notice that this has actually got six bays on the front of hard drives. They are three and a half inch SATA bays, but of course there is two SSD bays here. These are 2.5 inch SATA SSD bays that form one of the three tiers on this system. Also internally, there's the third tier, the NVMe SSD base, and those are PCIe Gen 3 times four PCIe base. And we will get the lid off towards the end of this video to give you guys a good look on the inside of this device. But ultimately, why should you care about another new six, eight bay NAS on the market? What makes this so special? What makes this so different? I mean, the chassis looks really similar, doesn't it? It looks a lot like the old 82 series. So why should you consider this over that? Well, several reasons. First and foremost, it is ZFS. ZFS, is, as a file system, is as good as it gets in 2020. I know a lot of the time on this channel, we will talk about BTRFS and how it compares against ext 4 but I think everyone kind of agrees that ZFS be where it's at. It's probably the most demanding file system of the majority of data storage platforms, but it does that, and but it gives you so much more. It removes an entire layer from your storage structure, meaning things like RAID building, RAID rebuilding can be done a lot quicker, snapshot uh, creation, um, support of shared folders and new storage areas and volumes within the inside of this device are all merged into one of layer so consequently everything's done a mite bit quicker it also introduces compression and deduplication internally with the way it handles transmission of data consequently this device will use less space long term and the data itself will be um, of a much higher recovery rate and with compression and uh, deduplication it allows the system to back up multiple sources at once in the most efficient possible way now we've got several software overview videos for this that i've started filming prior to this this is fully populated and these videos cover everything from the general storage overview to the full system overview and how qts compares with qts and generally the system itself what happens when you lose drives we've done some raid building some raid rebuilding we've had lots of fun with this device and luckily it means after all this testing i can genuinely tell you that this is one of my favorite analysis of the year it's not cheap it arrives at about 1800 nicker um, in the, the current version that it's in it does support ddr4 memory ecc ddr memory in fact and it's got four slots inside ready to be populated by uh, long dim memory the CPU inside that Xeon, again, one of the higher end Xeons. I'm sure it's up there at the top corner of the screen. I'm not going to bore you by reading numbers that you can read yourself. But the internals of this system, it is not a graphically um, engaged chip. It doesn't have embedded uh, graphics on board. It's not an Intel Core, and it's not designed to be an Intel Core. And that's one of the other main differences between this and the 82 series with its i3, i5, i7 architecture. This is designed around the Xeon. And Xeon, when it comes to business data storage in terms of virtualization and on fast exchanges of data, the are the requirements of pretty much all AI systems, ZFS and a Xeon CPU is very, very impressive indeed and definitely something to look at. So talking of looking at it, let's actually look at it. So let's look at one of these hard drive bays first. It's already been fully populated um, with Seagate NAS drives inside. And again, these are the click and load trays that we've seen before. You can just remove it like so. Tray comes out nice and simple. Put the drive inside, bang, you're done. And of course, you don't have to fully populate this device, but bit of a shame not to you can scale things over time and of course you can take advantage of zfs's uh, ray configurations as well which is always handy um, each tray can be locked there at the front which is always good to know um, on top of that you've got those ssd bays as well which i believe are locked right now but the trays themselves 
long trays, nice and simple, two and a half inch uh, media inside. You can put one or two inside. And the other cool thing about the three tiers of storage on this system is that each one can be used for raw storage. You're not limited to just utilizing it for caching here. The main storage base, you're obviously always gonna use that for storage, but the idea that you can create uh, your general hard drives to be your basic day-to-day -day storage, your SSDs to work as nice, fast-acting SSD RAID 1 storage for an editor, and then you've got NVMe SSDs inside that can either be utilized for caching uh, of the main storage array, or you can use them for raw NVMe speeds um, caching. Now, this supports uh, uh, caching and access. The NVMe's inside, they do, um, you know, uh, at the moment we've got it installed with Seagate Iowall 510s, and each of those SSDs will give you somewhere around three to 4,000 megabytes per second read, and the write speed in well in excess of 2,000. So if you were to take advantage of this system with maybe 10 GBE, then you would certainly have a great editing solution there where you've got fast NVMe media inside for live um, editing and stuff like that. Then, or a video as well, of course. Then you've got the uh, SATA bays there on the front that can also be used for editing, but you might likely use those for caching and assisting in that duplication and compression in the background. Now, the device arrives with QTS as standard. I understand that there is a choice during boot where you can choose between the two systems, but obviously if you're going to spend this much money, you almost certainly are going to be using the ZFS platform that's built into this device. It is a little bit more resource hungry, but it does it because it needs it and it, you do feel the output. It does seem that it feels a very responsive system and you'll see that in most of the software overviews. There's an LCD panel built into the front of the device that gives you real-time information about um, the IP, internal temperatures, any warnings, stuff like that. And of course, the software inside is fully functional with many, many applications for virtualization, surveillance, file management with multiple apps for that, photo management with AI-powered photo recognition built in as well, and although there are media applications like Plex and Video Station, Photo Station, that sort of thing, this isn't really the target for that. So my advice, stick to business, get a business class system. Now, um, if we look at the rear of the device, and I try not to make too much noise in front of the mic, we can take a good look at the ports and connections. Now, on the rear of the device, we've got those two PCIe slots here at the top, and these are PCIe Gen 3 times 8 which is always good to know. That means each one of those slots can give you up to 8,000 megabytes per second throughput with the internal system. So if you do install combo cards, or you install you know, 40 GBE cards or 20 GBE cards, that sort of thing, then you're going to get that full throughput into the system. There's three fans on the rear. You've got the main two fans here, and you've got the fan attached to the internal PSU. I'm sure the strength of that PSU has appeared on screen already. And we've got loads more ventilation here on the side over the internal panel of where the CPU and a lot of the fun stuff lives that we're going to look at in just a moment. We've got here four LAN ports here, RJ45, but 2.5 GBE each. So combined with link aggregation, up to 10 GBE are readily available. And of course, they are each backwards compatible, so you can use it in a 1G system. And then as you upgrade the rest of your infrastructure, this thing's good to go. And don't overlook those PCIe slots. On the base, we've got USB 3 ports, and there's one on the front for a USB 1 touch copy button, which is good. You've got lots of backup tools on this. You've got uh, a brand new VM backup tool that they've brought to market recently, but you've also got hard, um, Hybrid Backup Sync 3, and you've got things like BoxSafe, uh, Virtual JBOD, and Hybrid Mount. These are great tools for synchronizing and sharing your networks of storage together intelligently with either this QNAP in the middle or it living at another part of the system, making sure all of those are backed up. Now, it is a big system, and this power supply at the bottom is going to, you know, it's going to get hungry. There's no avoiding that. This is a three-tier storage system with a lot of cooling. A little bit more you're going to see inside in a moment. So. It's not the quietest now when it's running. Do watch out for that in the software videos. You will hear it humming in the background. Even though we did have the device fully populated, it wasn't unbearably noisy, but there's no avoiding that a NAS of this size with a metal chassis is always going to make more noise overall. So if we remove this top lid here, and I've already undone the screws on the side, so you won't have to watch the tedious part of me removing screws from the chassis. And if we remove that lid, we can take a good look inside this device. 
And as you see, in the main storage area, there is quite a lot of space for ventilation there. You've got the PSU there at the bottom, and if you look at the top, you've got those two SATA bays, but lots of space there for ventilation. But it's the other side which is the more interesting of the two. I'll bring that up there. We can see here at the bottom this giant heat sink here, which is it has that Xeon CPU underneath. We've also got multiple controllers internally here. A five gigabit, uh, five gigabyte flash module there, where the OS is living when you first get the device. But of course, you can update it throughout its lifespan. And here we have this enormous cooling system built here on the top. Underneath there, we have got the memory modules on one side, and on the other side, you can see the, if you have a look there, the two NVMe SSD bays. So again, lots of storage potential and lots of ways to keep the system cool whilst in operation, because this is gonna be getting busy, this device. So cooling is going to be paramount as far as this device goes in a day-to-day -day operating uh, environment in any business. But this has been the hardware overview of the brand new QNAP TSH886. If you are interested in learning more about this device, there are links in the description. If you go to linkspan.com, the storage experts, They've got 25 years in the beers, and if you're looking for the right storage solution, they're going to be the ones you should go to. Otherwise, you can check out the NAS Compare review in the description below. And of course, you can find me anytime here on the channel. I will see you next time.